Hey, what's going on, guys? The Horror Man back with a massive collection update. It's so big, I'm calling it Physical Media Mania. Media. I had planned on doing a holiday haul, or holiday, after Christmas, showing all of the movies I got this year. Unfortunately, I caught COVID after Christmas, so I put that idea on the back burner. Prior to the holiday, there had been a ton of stuff I had picked up at thrift stores, going back to October, I think. For one reason or another, I never got around to showing all of that either, so I decided to show it all now in one massive collection update. This will be stuff I got before Christmas, on Christmas, and after Christmas, as recently as yesterday. There are 4Ks, Blu-rays, DVDs, VHS tapes, CEDs, and laser discs. Like I said, it's physical media mania. Because there is so much to get through, I will just briefly show each. Even still, you might want to grab yourself a snack and settle in. This could take a while. I hope you enjoy seeing what I got. And so, here we go. Let's start with the CEDs. Here's Westworld. I love this artwork. Next up on CED is Frankenstein. And the last of the CEDs is The Visitor. Check that out. On to the laser discs now with Battlestar Galactica. This is, of course, the 1978 movie that served as the series pilot. Here's one of my all time favorite films on Laserdisc Harold and Maud. And another one of my favorites The Terminator on Laserdisc. Here's a great underrated horror film. It's the key video Laserdisc release of Anguish. Wes Craven's The Serpent and the Rainbow. Here's a brand new, still sealed copy of The Invisible Man on Laserdisc. And the last of the Laserdiscs is this deluxe letterbox edition of The Fearless Vampire Killers for my Sharon Tate collection. Let's move on to more analog media with the VHS haul portion of this video. And another one for my Sharon Tate collection. Valley of the Dolls on VHS. I found this Anchor Bay VHS release of The Beastmaster. Legal Tender, which is an obscurity and a pretty rare tape. Speaking of rare tapes and obscurities, here's another one. Heart. I got The Invisible Man on VHS to go along with that laser disc I just showed. And here's a different VHS edition of Frankenstein from the one I already own. I finally found a copy of Dracula on VHS. And here's a different VHS release of The Phantom of the Opera from the one I have. Another for my Abbott and Costello collection. Bud Abbott and Lou Costello meet the killer, Boris Karloff. Here's a brand new, still sealed copy of the 20th anniversary VHS edition of Midnight Express. A controversial film at the time, Last Tango in Paris. And The Grudge on VHS, which was apparently a former Hollywood video rental. I found this cool VHS release of Diabolique to go along with my other. And I found the remake to go along with that. Here's a movie called Tunnel Vision, which you don't see around all too often. And the Stanley Kubrick Collection VHS release of 2001, A Space Odyssey. I had picked up The Long Kiss Goodnight before Christmas, just in time for the season. And I grabbed this contemporary classics VHS edition of Blue Velvet. A film from David Decatu, Leeches. And the Nelson Entertainment VHS release of Children of the Corn. I found Alien vs. Predator on VHS. And a movie called Skipped Parts with a great cast and a fun concept. I had gotten this VHS screening copy of Super Mario Brothers, the movie, a while back, which is super rare and very expensive. Here's the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers on tape. Another one I had gotten a while back, Single White Female. Here's a promotional screening copy of SLC Punk, which is another rarity on VHS. For some reason, this is an expensive movie to get on tape. 
the MCA home video VHS release of Streets of Fire, and an obscurity called Cannibal, with a K. I got the original Cat People on tape, and the Star Maker VHS release of Chud, to go along with my Video Treasures copy. The Walt Disney Home Video VHS release of Return to Oz, to go along with the Anchor Bay editions I own. Another one for my Dawn of the Dead collection, the Director's Cut, released by Republic Pictures on tape. A Charles Band production, Spellcaster, and Robot Jocks on VHS, to go with the screener I already own. I picked up The Others on tape, and Battlestar Galactica, to go along with that Laserdisc. The original House on Haunted Hill, and another original, The Blob, with Steve McQueen. The Sixth Sense on VHS. And The Frightening, another one from David Decatu. It might seem odd that I picked this one up, but this tape is actually super rare. The Last Unicorn. And another super rare tape. Multiple Maniacs from John Waters. I always loved this cover. Pep Squad. The Perfect Wife, which, as you can see, comes in this yellow VHS shell. A rarely ever talked about Dennis Hopper film, Bloodbath. And another tape that is conspicuously rare, Good Burger. This is actually a screener VHS. I'm not sure why this movie is so expensive on tape. The MGM Movie Time release of The Sure Thing. And another from MGM. Invasion USA. Here's another from the MGM Contemporary Classics line, The Silence of the Lambs. And another promotional screening copy, Go. Here's a VHS screener of Grave Secrets, not to be confused with the other Grave Secrets. This one stars Patty Duke and David Soule. I picked up Seven on VHS, What's in the Box, and Vamp. This is the Anchor Bay VHS release. Zoltan, Hound of Dracula from Republic Pictures. And White Phantom from Vidmark Entertainment. Here's an obscurity. Belfagor, Phantom of the Louvre. Here are some VHS clamshell editions, starting with this VCI home video release of Blood and Black Lace. And some Anchor Bay clamshells. First, The Night Strangler to go along with The Night Stalker, which I already own. The Collector's Edition of Prizzy's Honor. I'm not sure if I had already shown this in a past video, but even still, I'm showing it anyway. This is the Collector's Edition of George A. Romero's The Crazies. Here's a rare tape. The Anchor Bay Clamshell VHS release of Torso. Here's the original Warner Home Video Giant Clamshell VHS release of Cujo and the Magnum Entertainment giant clamshell of The Asphyx. And the last of the VHS tapes is this Prism Entertainment giant clamshell of Dominique, or Dominique is Dead. On to the DVDs now. I'm not sure if everyone knows this or not, but I'm a huge Survivor fan. I've been watching since day one. I've seen every season multiple times, and I try to pick up the box sets when I see them. So I found Survivor Pearl Islands on DVD, Survivor Vanuatu, which I think is one of the most underrated seasons, and Survivor Palau. I'm not sure why this DVD is so rare and expensive, but it is. Immortality. This is the Merrimax DVD release, and this movie is also known as The Wisdom of Crocodiles, which Jason and I reviewed during the Fangoria Challenge. I picked up the Republic's Pictures DVD release of Freeway, which was recently released by Vinegar Syndrome. I found this 30th anniversary edition of Midnight Express and could not leave it behind. It comes with the DVD and a collector's book. I picked up the fourth season of Frasier on DVD, which includes one of my favorite Thanksgiving episodes. Here's an obscurity in a hard plastic jewel case, Play Nice. And another DVD jewel case release, Pick Up Summer. I grabbed Fatal Attraction on DVD to go along with the VHS tapes I own. And another edition of A Force of One with Chuck Norris. 
Antebellum, I've heard good things about this movie. And Revenge, which looks pretty awesome. I got this Paul Nashy double feature DVD. And based on Jason's recommendation, because he watched this the other night, I grabbed The Girl on the Train. This looked awesome, and it's brand new and still sealed. Kickboxer from Hell. The Snapper Case DVD release of John Carpenter's Memoirs of an Invisible Man. I found this brand new, still sealed Anchor Bay release of It Waits. Shriek, if you know what I did last Friday the 13th, which was last week. Dead Again on DVD. I already have this on VHS. A Chuck Norris triple feature DVD set of Breaker Breaker, Hero and the Terror, and Lone Wolf McQuaid. I grabbed the theatrical version of The Exorcism of Emily Rose on DVD, because I already own the unrated cut. And I found Man-Thing, which is one I've actually been wanting for a while. I found this early snapper case release of Westworld, the Legacy Series 2-disc edition of The Deer Hunter, the Legacy Collection of The Invisible Man films, the Dracula films, the Mummy films, and the Wolfman films. I already had Frankenstein and The Creature from the Black Lagoon. A friend of mine has been telling me to check this out for years, so I finally picked it up. Train with Thora Birch. The Haunting. This is, of course, the remake. Here's another one where you might find yourself scratching your head, but I'm telling you, this is a rare DVD. The Big Comfy Couch, Best of Season 1. More Chuck Norris with Code of Silence. I picked up Blade Runner 2049 on DVD. I finally found Evil Bong with Tommy Chong. The Snapper Case release of The Crush with Alicia Silverstone. I showed this recently in my Four or More Drive video. Drive, this is the Canadian DVD release. Here's another Anchor Bay release, and a rare one at that. It's a two-disc DVD double feature of Django and Django Strikes Again, in this thick case. I picked up Prisoners of the Ghostland. I heard this one is wild. Here's one I was super happy to find. Getting Lucky. I will probably be reviewing this for St. Patrick's Day this year. For those of you who have never seen it, this is the movie in which a guy gets shrunk down and finds himself lost in a girl's bush while she's in the shower. I don't think I have to tell you it's one of those scenes you'll never forget after seeing it. Chuck Norris again in The Octagon. The original Snapper Case DVD release of Eight-Legged Freaks. I found this brand new still sealed copy of Rogue with Megan Fox at the thrift store. The complete first season, which ended up being the complete series of HBO's Vinyl. And I got Jay and Silent Bob reboot out of the bargain bin. I went looking for the Terrifier 2 steelbook the day it was released, but couldn't find it at first. So instead, I picked up the DVD at first. I finally got a copy of Almost Human, which was actually filmed in my home state. I also got 13 Fanboy. I've been dying to see this one. This one wasn't easy to get a hold of for a bit, but my wife was able to track down a copy. Spirit Halloween, the movie. And the last of the DVDs is this four-film collection, four-disc set, containing... Cabin Fever, Cabin Fever 2, Spring Fever, The Descent, and The Descent 2. And now, on to the 4Ks and Blu-rays, which I'll just show together. I can't remember if I've shown this already, but regardless, here it is. I found this 4K Blu-ray combo pack of John Carpenter's Halloween at the thrift store, so I obviously had to buy it. It was brand new, by the way, and as you can see, still has the slip cover. I updated my DVD copy of The Quiet Ones to Blu-ray. This is the Canadian release. I don't care what anyone says, I love this movie, so I upgraded this one as well. Love Actually. Jason loves this movie, and he pretty much forced me to pick it up, but I'm glad he did. Piercing. 
I'll be talking more about this one soon enough. I found the House of the Devil on Blu-ray, brand new, which was lucky because this went out of print and is pretty expensive now. I found this limited edition of No Time to Die, which comes with the three-disc Blu-ray sets and a collector's book. I found No Country for Old Men on Blu-ray at the thrift store, and since this is probably one of my favorite movies ever made, I had to pick it up. I finally got The Terminator on Blu-ray as well. Who knows what took me so long. But it's cool because it came in this red Blu-ray case. I found the complete first season of Banshee on Blu-ray at the thrift store, so why not? I've never seen the show, but it's a Blu-ray at the thrift store. I believe at that same thrift store on the same day, I also found this, Jacob's Ladder on Blu-ray. That's also the same thrift store where I found this Criterion Collection Blu-ray release of Dressed to Kill. I found this extreme unrated Blu-ray set of Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. And that steelbook I mentioned earlier, which I found a week later, Terrifier 2. I love the image on the back of this. And the Best Buy exclusive 4K Blu-ray limited edition steelbook of Halloween Ends. Strangler vs. Strangler? This is the Mondo Macabro limited edition Blu-ray release, limited to only 1,000 copies. As you can see, this one also came in a red Blu-ray case. Smile, which I still need to watch. And Men, which I also haven't seen yet. The VCI Entertainment Blu-ray release of Blood and Black Lace. This contains both the original Italian version and the dubbed English version. Knock Knock with Keanu Reeves and Anna de Armas. Yum. And The Menu, which I just picked up and watched this week. The Night House. I've heard nothing but good things about this, and I cannot wait to watch it. The Haunted World of El Superbisto which now completes my Rob Zombie collection. Jeepers Creepers Reborn, which everyone seems to hate. Imagine that. I loved it. The Suicide Squad. I can't wait to finally see this. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. I heard this was a lot of fun. And speaking of fun, that seems to be the word most used to describe Bullet Train. My mom loved this one, and she told me I had to see it. Eye of the Devil, yet another for my Sharon Tate collection. And The Black Phone, which I still haven't seen. George A. Romero's lost film, The Amusement Park. I love this cover. Clerks 3, which I hear is amazing, and I don't doubt it. Speaking of amazing, this one I can confirm. Top Gun Maverick. It's probably my favorite movie of 2022. Fall, the TV spots alone gave me anxiety, and Orphan First Kill, which my son also got for Christmas, and he really liked it. And let's finally finish this up with some Vinegar Syndrome releases. First, Zombie 5, Killing Birds. Girls School Screamers, and here's the back of the slip, the finishing school that finished them off. I love it. The American Scream. And here's the back of this one. The joke's on you. Surf 2. This is a two-disc Blu-ray set, and I'm sure you'll enjoy the back of this slipcover. And finally, the two-disc 4K Blu-ray combo pack of Invisible Maniac. Now, I do own the rare VHS release of this one, and I reviewed the movie for the Slashback Challenge a few years back. But it's so much fun, so I really wanted to own it on Blu-ray and 4K. So that is it, guys. That's all. I think. If I missed anything, so be it. I showed enough. I told you this would be a long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. What do you think about what I got? Comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up and be kind subscribe.